Right, more bad news. The speedo isn't working and that sensor that arrived is the wrong one. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, we need to get the Corsa B C20 Lite kind of finished off because this is all really last minute. So I really did my best to get it ready. So I honestly get it MLT'd as well. So yeah, a bit of a task ahead of us. Um, right, so the plan is we need to basically install the adjustable fuel pressure regulator and then try to adjust the feeling, get the car running better. We install a fan, obviously for the radiator, so we can cool the car anytime we like because there's no way to do it originally, like the car was before. So yeah, we need to install it via switch. And also we need to basically strip and clean the front brakes because they've been sitting for a while and yeah, they need a good, good clean. Um, I'm gonna kind of grind off all the rust off it because believe it or not, the front brakes in that car are pretty much brand new. They just need a good clean because they've been sitting for a while. The brakes on the front are actually uh, V6 brakes. So I'm assuming that's not like a Calibra uh, Cavalier or something like that, but the good brakes will do the job. So that's basically the plan for today. So. Let's get started. Right, so first thing we'll probably do is is install the adjustable fuel pressure regulator. Now, here it is here, it's specifically for a C20 let. Now, the only thing I don't like about this design is you don't know like what kind of fuel pressure you're actually uh, doing. Now the, only real, now, the only real way you can actually know your fuel pressure is to get like an external uh, fuel pressure regulator. I can do that, but this is just quicker because I actually have this here. But we'll still be able to get an idea of what we're doing with obviously the AM wideband. So I'm gonna put this on right now. And um, it's really easy. It's only held on by like what four uh, eight millimeter bolts. Take me two seconds to change it. So I'll do that off camera. And I'll bring back the camera. We're ready to crack on with the next job. Ah, fuck's sake. Ugh. Right, that's the adjustable fuel pressure rig installed. Um, hopefully this will make a difference as well. I'll have more flexibility with the fueling as well. Because bear in mind, this car is running Z20 let fuel injectors. So yeah, these are not the original injectors. So they'll need kind of like tuning in and dialing in with using this properly. So yeah. Right, so the next thing we actually need to do is, is to clean the front discs. Because yeah, again, they've been sitting for ages. They need a good clean for the MLT and all that kind of boring stuff. So I'm gonna jack up one side at a time take off the discs and obviously grease up all the brakes and make sure they're all good. So let's crack on with the driver's side and then the passenger side. Yeah, like I said, they do need a proper clean, but yeah, they are generally brand new. And what I mean, what I mean by that is there's like zero wear on it and the pads have got plenty meat in them because yeah, they are good brakes. So, and they're drilled in grooves as well. So unless you're gonna, Put the caliber off on the carrier, and at least it gives a good, good clean. So, let's crack on. Tell you what, you can definitely hear how dry these sliders are. I mean, just listen to the squeak. Yep, they need a good grease up. So let's get this off and get it sorted. Right, so things stripped down. Um, yeah, all these sliders are just completely dry. They need a good clean and a grease up, so everything's stripped down. The car is actually in good condition. There's no measure corrosion on it at all. So all it needs is a quick clean and then get it all back together again and then crock on the other side. So right, that's what this had a good clean down with the kind of grinder, but with the kind of wire attachment on it, if that kind of makes sense. So that's all the kind of surface I've removed. Uh, just couldn't leave it like that, to be honest. So anyway, let's get it all back together again and then crock on with the other side. Right, as so we hint as to what I might do in the future, um, all the brakes are going to get sent away and get powder coated, uh, probably yellow. Um, I'm also going to get an upgrade anti roll bar and all the suspensions get stripped down and all sent away to get sandblasted and powder coated. Uh, because I want to think this car looking absolutely mint because the car is mint, so yeah. Um, but yeah, also I'm actually going to be grub screw for here as well because obviously because you have a Cavalier, they don't sit very well either. So with that screw in there, it's perfect. So anyway, I'll crack on with the other side off camera and then we can uh, crack on with the rest of the work. Guys, now we actually have two more jobs to do. Now, one of those are, we need to install the alternator belt because the belt that came with the car was actually too small. Uh, I think the size of it was like, what, 720 millimeters long or something like that. And obviously it was too short. So we, in theory, have the correct one here. This is 925 mil, which is apparently the correct size. So hopefully it is because when we had the car running without the alternator belt, it was causing whole heap of problems so 
yeah we need to get this on asap also we need to get up the rs turbo spark plugs in the car to like what 0.6 millimeter so i'll show you how to do that so the first thing we'll do is is install the alternator belt obviously with the alloy pulley so let's jack up the car and get that done that's the alloy pulley on and i must say it looks really really good now the moment of truth will this belt fit let's try it out oh yeah it actually fits so now Right, so all I need to do now is just tension up and we can move on to gapping the RS turbo spark plug. So I'll do this off camera and then we'll crack on with them. Just pulled out one of the spark plugs. Now the gap is like 0.6 mil is supposed to be for these RS turbo spark plugs. And I, and I put the feeder gauge in at 0.63 millimeter or I don't know what, but 0.6 anyway. And the plugs seem to be gapped just fine, so I don't think they really need gapped. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm doing it wrong as per usual or what, but I'll need to look into that. So leave it for now and then we'll carry on with the next jobs. Right, now that the alternator belt is on, I'm actually going to start the car and see if there's going to be any difference to the way the car runs. Because obviously with there no alternator belt been on, there have been uh, voltage drops and all that kind of nonsense. So fingers crossed, this alternator belt has made a difference. So I'll start the car and see what happens. Just like the AM gauge do its little cycle thing. <laughs> now, I don't know what's wrong here, right? But I don't know why that's reading like that. That's weird, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I'm gonna just cut the camera here and just see what's going on. Right guys, so good news actually, right? The car's actually running a lot better. Like it's not idling weird uh, or anything like that at all. Whereas before the revs would like go up and down, up and down and all over the place. So, so thankfully, yes, the car is kind of running a lot better now, but the only two problems we're left with, I need your help with this guys. The AM wideband is not taking a reading. So I might relocate that to the actual downpipe, like closer to the turbo. So I'll try that first and then we'll take that from there. We'll point to that in the next clip. And another problem is it's overfueling. And um, yet again, I can't really do anything with that until I find out how much it's overfueling by. So I think the first protocol is we'll get the AM wideband working properly. Then we can kind of take things from there and get the car running spot on. Right guys, it's actually a new day. So what's the plan? Now to get the car running better, I've done a couple of things and hopefully it makes a difference. I've relocated the AM wideband sensor to the downpipe where someone recommended I should put it maybe because it gets a better reading i'm not too sure also i cleaned the sensor so hopefully we get a reading from that now if it doesn't work i'll need to buy a brand new sensor because if sean did say this sensor is a bit temperamental so we might need to replace the sensor but i'll give it a good clean hopefully it works so i put fresh fuel in as well because the fuel that's in the tank is old so let's go and start her up and see if it's made any difference at all and that stupid fuel gauge isn't getting a reading again so i'm probably going to buy a new sensor to be honest but the engine is very, very smooth. Like, super smooth. Right guys, good news. Um, the temperature gauge is working, look. Because I don't know for a while, I thought it wasn't working because it took so long to actually work, but the car's been running for a wee while now and it seems to be working quite well. It's just that bloody AM gauge. Um, I'm just not gonna cheap out, I'm just gonna buy a new sensor just because I don't have time to like mess about, but the car is running so smooth, it's unbelievable. Um, it's idling a little bit higher than I would like to, but it's not excessive, so I'm not too bothered about that. That could just be the way it is. I mean, this is an EDS 3.5, so I mean, it could just be the way it is. I don't know, but everything works. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, I'm really happy. Right, so, Here's something else I've done off camera. Uh, I've installed the fan on a switch. Now the reason I've done that because um, I was told yes, you can wire it back up to the original kind of like layout, but on voxels, like the fan kicks in quite high. I don't want the car to actually overheat or boil over. So I'd much rather have full control. I actually have it on a switch. I can keep the car nice and cool whenever I want. And also, I fit an inline fuse. 
just so there's no problem. So I'll show you that now. So here's obviously some of the wiring here. Yes, I know I need to tidy it up because I've not long installed it. But yeah, there's the wee kind of inline fuse just so there's no issues at all because it's not very advisable to do something like that without a fuse. Obviously the wiring goes around there, down there, kind of tucked it down there. As it goes to the fan there. Right, so something else we need to do in the Corsa is change the mileage because so the mileage on the Speedo is like, what, 27,013, which is incorrect because the actual mileage of the car is like 59,000, uh, 59,000 and something. So we need to change it and show you how to do that. So the first thing you want to do is, obviously, is remove the kind of, all the Speedo, obviously. And then obviously remove your cover, which is this. Um, if you watch from previous videos of mine, you'll see how to actually completely strip this down to give you an idea. It's only held on by what, a few clips there and there. Very easy stuff. One thing I want to mention is this process is the same for cable and electronic speedos. So let's get this removed and I'll show you the rest. Also, once you actually unscrew this, there's a little kind of like connector in there, but I'll show you that. So let's crack on. Right, so this is this bit removed now. And as you can see, there's a little connector in there that basically just kind of pushes off. You just get your little kind of screwdriver and like kind of push in there, and that basically removes the clip connector. Hey guys, one thing I will say is doing this on the electric speedo is considerably easy than doing it on the cable one. So where are we at? Um, I had to remove this little arm. Now that is hiding just down there. Uh, once you move them four screws, this bit kind of separates and it kind of falls out. You move this blue little cog, which it again pulls off very easily with a small screwdriver or some spoons. That goes there. And as you can see, that's about what you attach the drill to now. Make sure you don't separate this too far from that because I notice there's like some sort of like, well, you see that brass weird kind of wiring, whatever the hell it is there. Some of that in there and that kind of like stretches a bit so I don't actually know if I've broken it or not. I don't have a clue and kind of don't give a fuck at this point in time. It's getting really pissed off. I want this shit finished. It just bugs my tits this. So... One eternity later. Right guy, now as you'd expect, it's actually a new day and it took, so today is Wednesday, so yesterday was Tuesday and it took literally the whole Tuesday for the mileage to be corrected and it's done. It's now reading 61,207, which is right about where it needs to be, so that is perfect, that's job done. Now I pray the speedo works because there are some complications when doing this, so yeah, I pray that the speedo still actually works. So yeah, only time will tell really, and I'll let you guys know if it does work or not. So good news, a sensor has come for the AM wideband. Um, so let's get a sensor on, and I pray to God that gauge works. Hey, right, more bad news. The speedo isn't working, and that sensor that arrived is the wrong one. Well, it says on the website anyway that's AM compatible, but obviously they're lying because the plug's completely different. And for some bewildered reason, the speedo just isn't working. I just took it like, I'm not gonna say. But the speedo isn't working, guys. Um, I'm really fucked off because it took a lot of work to get that mileage corrected. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Might need to use the speedo just for the MLT just to correct the mileage. Then we get another speedo or try and get someone working. I don't actually know, guys. But Right, so something else we need to do as well. I need to get just two front tyres for the MLT because I checked the tread on these and yeah, they're actually below the legal limit. So, and because once upon a time these were good tyres, I think they're. Uniroyal Rain Sports, so they're not cheap tires, you know, so yeah, we're waiting to get some tires put on them uh, The tires I'm going for, they're like mid-range kind of performance tires, but they'll do the job for now So eventually I'm gonna get semi-slicks on the front This is just for the MLT to get it through and then after that in the future once I get a LSD I'll get semi-slicks on the front and all that kind of good stuff. So I'll bring my camera. We've got brand new tires on Speedlane Alessos and just like that, we got two brand new tires, all balanced and ready to go on. Now, these are like just some mid-range performance tires. Um, I don't know how good they are, but they'll do the job for now. The Uni the Uniroyal Rain Sports are on the back are still good. So they'll do for now until we get some semi-slicks. So we're all good. So let's get these on, get the car back on the ground. Guys, it's actually been a few days, probably even longer than that, since the last clip you've seen where I got new tires on the speed lines. Now, there's been a few kind of developments since then. Um, I'm supposed to source a new speedo because obviously the one in it isn't working so 
the one that's in at the moment with the correct mileage, I'll use that for MOT purposes, just so the mileage is correct and kind of consistent throughout the history. Also, the new sensor that I put on the car for the AM wideband, it's still being quite temperamental, so I'm assuming it's a gauge that's faulty. So I'm going to try and borrow an uh, AM wideband gauge of a friend, and if that one works, then we'll know the problem. Apart from that, there's nothing else to really kind of report back to you guys on the Corsa. It's going well, everything in the car's fine, um, I'm just kind of in the process of getting LT'd, but you'll all see that in the next video, where you'll find out if the car passes or fails, or anything that goes on with the car, and also, in the next video, you'll potentially see a first drive video, which I'll be super excited for. So, with that being said, thank you guys for watching, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video.